Hi everybody, this is part 10 of our UML tutorial series. In this part, we want to talk about component diagrams. So, if you're ready, let's get started. Unlike the other diagrams that we have explained so far, uh, which they were going to show us the functionality in our system, the component diagram is a little bit different than those. So, a component diagram actually is not going to describe the functionality of our system, but it is going to describe the components used to make those functionalities. It actually shows us the system from a more global perspective to see what components do we have and how they work together. So, what is a component? Component can be different pieces of our project or maybe some related classes that all together do a particular service. Components are used to help us organize our system into manageable, reusable, and swappable pieces of software. And how they can do that? Well, by using interfaces. Actually, a component does a service. And uh, how it can do that service? Well, by accepting some inputs and providing some outputs. Inputs and outputs are defined by, by interfaces, right? So, here is an example of a component diagram. This is a component, and th these two are the uh, parts of the component. They can be classes, or they themselves can be components too. And uh, this is what we call port. And this is a required interface, and these two are provided interfaces, which we will get to that and explain it more in details later. And uh, these are, again, some components that are connected together. We can show them like that, or we can show them like that, or we can also show them like that. So let's first see for whom a component diagram is. System developers and uh, designers and developers. Purpose. Describe the organizational relationships of the component, model, database, schema, executable of an application, systems, source, code. And uh, what are the important elements of a component diagram? Component, obviously, which is a reusable piece of code that includes classes and interfaces, and must communicate through interfaces, and uh, that's it. Actually, a component uh, uh, clearly shall have uh, some inputs and outputs all right required and provided interfaces they describe the service that a component offers required interface is the one that is required for a component to function and the provided interface may not be needed for a component though most of the times they do exist as a component gets something and provides something else so port what is a port? Used to represent related interfaces attached to a component. For example, component can have more than one provided interfaces. These interfaces will be attached to the component by port. Actually, a port can be uh, the property of the component or can be as simple as just showing that uh, uh, our component uh, has uh, multiple uh, uh, inputs or multiple outputs and that's it all right points to consider components have great responsibility in our system so it's important to keep them loosely coupled so that changes to a component do not affect the rest of the system how we can do that well through interfaces as an interface separates a behavior from its implementation now, what is the difference between black box and white box component views? White box component view shows the internal structure of a component. I mean, what object the component uh, contains. And focuses on the inner workings of the component itself to show how it achieves its goal through the classes that it uses. Whereas black box view shows the big picture of the components working together. In simple terms, actually, white bikes component view uh, actually shows that what other components or classes a component contains and uh, how they are working together to achieve the component's goal. But on the other hand, black box view 
uh, doesn't show the internal structure of a component but it shows how that component is connected to other components and that's it now let's take a look at these steps and see how we can draw a component diagram it actually doesn't matter which component we're going to start drawing with just draw one uh, with its interfaces and then we will draw the other component next to it actually most of the times uh, the provided interface of a component will be the required interface of another component so in this way we will draw uh, all of the related components and we're done with our component diagram so let's just go up there and see the, our component diagram examples in more details so as we have uh, described earlier this is our component and as we're showing uh, what uh, cl classes or uh, other components uh, our language translator component uh, contains uh, to achieve its goal this is actually the white box uh, component view and uh, english in is the required interface of our language translator component uh, that is connected we are dealing language import to the component and the uh, Spanish out and German out are our components provided interfaces which are connected via the language out port. So a language comes in, language analyzer analyzes it, and the language converter converts it into two other languages, which is Spanish and German. And that's it. Let's take a look at our other examples here. In this example, we have also used uh, the language translator component, but this is the black box view of this component because we're not focusing on the internal structure of the component, but we're going to show actually how it is connected to other components or services. And yeah, there are three ways to show interfaces in a component diagram the first way is just like how we have shown it here we actually use an incomplete circle for the required interface and we use a complete circle for the provided interface and well they can get connected together uh, just like how we can see it here actually the provided interface of this service is the required interface of our language translator component and this is true uh, here the provided interface of our language translator is the required interface of this service over here and this is the second way of uh, how we can show interfaces in the component diagram actually we can connect components together via the uh, dependency arrow so this service is dependent on the language translator and language translator is dependent on this service and the interfaces of the language translator are these two this interface is the provider interface which we show it by the realization arrow and this interface is actually the required interface and we show it by the dependency arrow, dependency arrow. and the third way to show interfaces is just like this in here we again show uh, which uh, component depends on another by using the dependency arrows and uh, here uh, instead of uh, showing uh, the interfaces by a uh, notation we can just simply uh, list the interfaces here the provider interfaces are spanish and out and german out and the required interface is english in and yeah we can also list the realizations of the language translator component language analyzer and lang converter and by realization i mean the parts that are taking part in the 
a function metadata that the component is going to provide or the service that it's going to provide actually and we can also list our artifacts I mean the I mean the files that we think are important for the component to work proper proper properly excuse me so that's it uh, about the component diagram I hope you enjoyed it and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to be notified of our upcoming tutorials and see you in the next part of our tutorial.